Hello and welcome to the Philippines. Uh, this video is a combination of about three different walks that I've made in the last couple of weeks. Uh, starting a, a few days after Typhoon, Super Typhoon Odette, international name Marai, that came through the central section of of uh, the Philippines. Did a lot of damage and I'm here in Cebu City, Cebu, uh, the Philippines. Um, I live in, in a condominium, many uh, floors up and uh, felt like two and a half hours of earthquake with the building swaying and my lights swaying and uh, the window shaking, extreme shaking. I thought they were going to come in anyway. Uh, this is a, a few days, uh, a street not so far from me. Uh, a lot of windows knocked out here. And the damage, it's, it's interesting how some buildings uh, stood up to this storm very well and other buildings did not. So I think it's a good time to uh, rethink and analyze some of the building, building materials, building processes, fasteners, uh, various types of things. Uh, previous video uh, I did. I talked a little bit about uh, I think the UC Medical Center in in Mandawi, uh, right next to uh, Chunghua Hospital. I didn't see much damage at Chunghua, the vantage point that I had, but UC Medical Center looked like it had an awful lot of uh, glass knocked out of their windows. Um, there's a tower down by SM Mall, Cebu City. Uh, new tower, not finished yet. Um, I think it's going to be a hotel plus commercial space in there. And it had quite a number of, of uh, window panes knocked out. So there again, they're going to have to rethink uh, what they're going to put in there. Because this was a strong storm, Category 5. Uh, the winds were right around 200 kilometers per hour, but they can come through here. Yolanda in uh, 2013 had winds up to 300 kilometers per hour. So I think uh, I think the architects, the developers need to uh, kind of rethink some of the materials uh, and the design that they're using. As far as the large uh, towering condominiums here in, in this area, Cebu metro area, the ones that I have been able to see, I have I've not been able to see much damage in the way of windows knocked out. You know, you've got trees down, you've got brush down, a number of different things. But the condominiums seem to have held up uh, quite well. Now, electric was out in, in many regions, so unless they had a generator with enough fuel to keep them going, they had some issues there. Um, LS2 Pension House. These people, as LS2, seem to have uh, a generator and diesel fuel because their lights are on most nights. Although they were off, they were off one or two nights. I think they must have been waiting for diesel fuel. Other condominiums also uh, running out of diesel fuel it might take a week to get a load of diesel fuel in. Everybody is looking for, they're looking for generators. They're looking for diesel fuel to run those generators. I'll show you here in a little bit. Uh, some guy's hardware store loading a, a large generator onto a uh, truck for delivery. Anyway, the Cebu City, Mandawi City does not have very many traffic lights, but the electric electricity is pretty much out in most of the city, although it's starting to come on uh, in, in many parts of the city, we, we, about a week ago, we received, uh, we received uh, our electric back on, and it's been on. It hasn't gone back off. But these are the kind of problems that you run into up here. These, uh, and what I've noticed is it's usually the concrete power poles that snap. Don't know why that is. I've looked at a, at a, a few of them, and I'm not an engineer, structural engineer, but it appears to me that there should probably be more rebar in these things. Give it more strength. I've seen some wood poles. I'm sure there's some wood poles that have snapped as well, but the wood poles that I have seen uh, have merely uh, been 
blown over, bent over. Uh, the metal ones also, um, up on the bridge going over to Mac 10, I saw one or two uh, that were, were bent, uh, relatively thin material, not really meant to stand up to heavy winds. There again, a something that the, uh, the engineers, the designers should consider when they uh, put those in, rather than taking the lowest bid and buying the cheapest material sometimes. And lots of 7-Elevens in town, and I checked in a couple, and they were out of, uh, out of cellular load, which I was looking for. Here's one of those big generators, medium-sized generator, I guess. They were loading, and they had a couple more on the side of the building. Belmont Hardware is a big hardware store here in, uh, in this city anyway, probably a number, number of them around. And Visaya Electric, this was... Uh, I think up in the uptown area of Cebu City. No, it wasn't. I'm not sure. It's next to a next to a Jollibee anyway. And uh, I've seen two two Jollibees, and their their metal poles came down like this. And well, this 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 is down by in Independencia Plaza, downtown area. The first week, week and a half, two weeks, there were long lines at gas stations, petrol stations, uh, people trying to fill up. There were some people filling containers and, and uh, marking it up and reselling the fuel. Um, long lines, and I'll show you a line a little bit later on here. It's in the evening, a little bit dark, but I'll show you one of those car lines back just down on this next street to the left as it got later at night. And there were long lines at ATM machines all over town, very long lines. And sometimes you'd get up there and they wouldn't have any money. I waited a number of days to go. Had to do two things. I had to get money out and I had to pay rent. I should have thought ahead of time. I should have done both of those before the storm. And this is up in uh, Mandawi someplace. And this is actually, this guy loaded up. He's taking his stuff to his store. And there are people that, uh, like Carbone Market downtown had some damage, and these people may be, they may be farmers that brought their goods down and just set them up downtown, selling them to the local people. Filipinos are survivors, and they, uh, they may know the area, they may have relatives or friends in this area, and they're, they set up their goods there on the corner. There's three trucks down here, and they're part of the government effort, I think, government or somebody, set up and they were all loaded with food packs, boxes of food, and uh, I guess they were handing those out to people from the area that would come by to pick those up, I guess. And another building over here. And back to the downtown area. Most of these shops are closed because there's no electric. There were a couple shops open. They didn't have electric, but they, maybe they had enough cash if, if the customers had cash. And this is a cash society. Uh, a lot of these these stores do not take credit cards. Your, your department stores, your bigger stores, uh, will like Metro up there, if, if their internet's working so that their, their machines are working. I've been in a couple stores the last couple days, three weeks after the storm, and their internet was not working to the point where they, they, they couldn't get a connection to the, uh, the credit card system. I've been trying to conserve cash uh, because uh, so many things are cash, so I use my credit card whenever I can, which is in the last three weeks has been zero times. I've not been to the, the grocery store yet. I've got a decent stock of food. But this is... Uh, Five streets come into this main intersection down here, and they've had a little bit of damage uh, that you can see. I don't know if you can hear the background noise. I've got uh, much of today. I've got I've got somebody with a chainsaw clearing logs, clearing down trees near me, and I hear that in the background. I've shut a couple windows, try to block some noise. I've got a couple dogs that have decided they were going to bark all day today. But if you hear that in the background, that's what that is. 
but yeah, these these stores down here. I hear different figures. You know, the uh, these electric companies. There's there's a number of different electric companies across the Visayas and and the Philippines. Uh, so there, e each one is giving you different information. There's one in uh, not in the Cebu area, but another area. They said they've electrified 90% of their customers. Now here in Cebu area, I think it's more like. 70 to 80 percent. We have electric where I live in the uptown area and yet just across the street and several blocks around me it's all dark and has been for three weeks so those people are uh, those people are uh, still out of luck. I don't see in the last week, week and a half, lions for water have gone way down uh, there were water trucks coming around and people would line up with their jugs to fill their water and I haven't seen that for over a week. It may be going on, I just haven't seen it. So there are there are water purifiers who are getting getting their electric back, who are uh, there are vehicles who are finding water, transporting it to the places that need water. There's spring water a deep well water. Uh, I know some people who have a deep well over in Lapu Lapu, Mactan Island. People here, they're selling uh, selling all sorts of battery lights, battery fans, and then of course you have to go someplace to charge your batteries up. Uh, those, those small little units might run an hour, two at the top, so I'm guessing unless you have a big battery pack to run it. The malls were closed for a number of days uh, after the storm. They had a uh, uh, combination of damage and electrical issues. Um, I think all these malls have, have big generators, but even, I know I was in SM Mall, the grocery store, no, quite a number of years ago, there wasn't a storm. But the electric went out, and it, it took several minutes for the generator to kick in, then it, it came on, went off, came on, went off, finally came on and then eventually electric came back on, but we were in the dark for for quite a number of minutes and uh, that creates a problem because then the uh, cash registers don't work. So it's like, I've got this cart full of stuff and I, I, no way I'm gonna pay for this. So anyway, life goes on. Filipinos are, if they're anything, they are survivors. They've gone through lots of storms, lots of hardships over the years they've learned They've got family, they've got extended family, and they're doing their best to help out their family, for their friends, their neighborhoods. Uh, a lot of people volunteering and helping. Hello. Here, here's some of the, the city workers. Right. I think they were uh, Good evening. Good evening. headed back after doing some cleanup, I suspect. <laughs> now this storm, this storm hit the central region, going north to south, it hit the central region. Uh, northeastern Mindanao primarily, um, the Visayas, which are the s center section between Luzon, a little bit of Luzon. Um, so there's still areas you can you can get to if you have the proper visa. They are not they are not accepting tourist visas. You can't just buy a ticket, fly in here, and get a tourist visa for 30 days. And that probably isn't going to happen for a minimum of, of two more months and. Uh, who knows what's going to happen what with these the various, the with these various variants that are they're coming. Most of them are what we keep hearing. They're they're milder. They spread faster, but they're milder, like the cold or the flu. And are you really going to continue to shut down the world's economies, shut down people's livelihoods, uh, because of a relatively mild virus? Doesn't make much sense never has. And this, this line of cars here, uh, there's, a, there's a truck up here loaded with people. They're trying to get way up to uh, Bantayan, Bantayan Island, I believe. And they don't have the fuel to get there. So they may be in line all night. They may get fuel tomorrow sometime, or they might not. I think this video was uh, probably about two weeks ago. 
and interesting. The, the people were out because it's it's dark and there's no ventilation in their houses. So everybody is out on the sidewalk, out on the street. And uh, kids were out here. They were, uh, people were paying the kids to go get us. Uh, uh, some kids brought, brought one van. They, they brought them a case of water. They found some place. The guys gave them a tip for doing that. Car, van full of people. These GoPro cameras are not very good at night. No, I, I think I have a, a night setting on my camera. I need to need to check that out and try that. Try using that at night. See if it actually works. But they are not known for, uh, for good uh, video at night in dark conditions. There is aid coming into the various areas from a number of countries, from a number of uh, aid organizations. There are. Uh, politicians uh, that are donating, that, that have money, that are donating money. The government of the Philippines is sending uh, money and aid into various areas. Um, these, these kids saw the camera and uh, give me money, give me money. Anyway, thanks for coming along. Stay safe, stay healthy. Stay out of the path of typhoon, and we'll see you next time.